Hello, everybody. Okay. This is Gabby Cano from Superhero Healing on Facebook, and I have the pleasure today of interviewing Sue Regan Kenny, who is the author, best-selling author of a book by the name uh, My Camino, as well as another book that I can't put down, How to Wear Bare Feet, and it's all about the barefoot movement. Thank you for joining us, Sue. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Oh my goodness. I, I don't even know where to begin with all the questions because there's so much that I, I want to ask you. So I'm, I'm trying to get everything organized in my head, but how, first of all, what is the barefoot movement? So uh, many years ago, about eight years ago, actually, I started barefooting. And when I first started, I noticed that people were extremely judgmental of mm -hmm. seeing somebody in their bare feet. I would go into stores and restaurants and, you know, they would ask me to leave because they thought it was unhygienic. Oh, wow. um, I mean, it's okay that we, you know, touch a railing and we, you know, uh, shake somebody's hand and, uh, you know, wipe our nose or whatever. And that's okay. But my feet don't touch any other person. Uh, you know, they have, they're, it's not unhygienic to be barefoot. Right. Yeah. And so I realized that there was a real ignorance out there about bare feet. Mm -hmm. And so I sort of took on my own little project just to inform people, to educate them, to help them to understand that this is something that's really important. So the Barefoot Movement is a group. There are several people out there mm -hmm. sort of in the world um, who are all on the same mission uh, to really just really help people to understand the importance of being connected with Mother Earth and also all the benefits of, of barefooting. So it's become a movement where people are joining in and, you know, running out in the snow and putting their bare feet in the snow and sharing their pictures and, and learning to overcome that fear. Yeah. Um, so one, one thing that I found very interesting about this, because it's not the first time that I come across the barefoot movement, but just overall the science behind it and the medical benefits that go into walking barefoot. I, and I actually hadn't made the connection between wearing shoes and our downgrading in health over the years. So I, if you can talk a little bit about the history of, of shoes even, um, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if you think back to our ancestors or you think back to the First Nations people and whatever we've seen and learned, you know, they wore moccasins. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, the oldest moccasins are like 5,000 years old or something like that. But the thing is, um, they only wore moccasins when it was in an extreme condition. The leather was precious, okay? They only took from the earth what they needed. They didn't just take as much as they wanted. They took what they needed and they left the rest. And so they only took the, the meat that they were going to eat. So that in turn meant there was only a certain amount of skin. So those moccasins were cared for and um, treasured because often you had them for a good part of your life. Mm -hmm. um, whereas today, I mean, look at what we do with shoes. How many yeah. pairs of shoes do we, does each person own? And how many times are we throwing them out, you know, wearing them for a year and then throwing them out? Mm -hmm. um, so that's just one thing that, you know, uh, that is really apparent to me. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing is that uh, once you start to understand what you're feet actually do for your entire body and for your brain, then you understand why we shouldn't be wearing shoes. So I think what happened over time is um, I did hear a story once that there was a king a long time ago in the 1800s who was quite short. And um, because he was short, he wanted to be taller. And so they built special shoes for him with heels. And so it was actually men that wore heels first. Ah, yes. And then women started wearing heels because what happened was men gave us the idea that we were sexy, that we looked good when we had heels on. Yeah. And um, yeah, and even to the point where, um, what are those shoes called? Louis Vuitton? Is that, oh. Am I saying it right? The Louis Vuitton I shoes so. with the red okay. sole? Um, I did. Yeah, I read a quote once that he said, 
that the reason that he liked women in heels is that it slowed them down so that he had more time to look at them. So, you know, what that says is it's, you know, we've been encouraged to deform our feet as women and to be in pain and to walk slower and to, you know, stumble through all for the sake of, you know, looking good and looking sexy. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's interesting when you start to look back at things like that. And then you look at Nike in the 70s. You know, what they did um, was really cruel and unusual punishment because they sold us on this idea that in order for our feet to work properly, to not overpronate or underpronate, we had to buy special shoes, uh, running shoes that had all this support and um, that were designed to help us not pronate. When in fact, we need to pronate in order to walk properly. Um, if you wear shoes that have a lot of support, then the muscles in your feet, if they're not being used, they will atrophy. Any muscle, anything in your body will atrophy if we don't use it. Mm-hmm. So here we were buying shoes that actually encouraged our feet to, the muscles in our feet to atrophy. And one quarter of all the muscles in our body are in our feet. So, you know, we have sort of the athletic approach to wearing shoes. Um, We have the historical approach for women in particular. And then obviously shoes became, um, you know, a a measurement of status. So, you know, my mother used to say, you know, that person's well healed, you know, and that meant that the shoes that they were wearing obviously showed that, that, you know, they had status Mm -hmm. in society. And, you know, she was raised with that idea. Even I was, you know, I, I had, I loved shoes. I spent a lot of money on shoes in my life and had a lot of pairs. And now, um, you know, now I understand that I don't want to, you know, subscribe to slowing myself down so that, you know, I can be watched or, um, you know, allowing my feet to, to actually become weaker and to become deformed in shoes. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think it's, you know, like I said earlier, there's an education that needs to take place so that people understand what shoes are doing. I'm not suggesting everybody be barefoot 24 hours a day, but I am suggesting that you understand what kinds of shoes are affecting you and then, and, and choose to do something about it. And also just choose to spend some time barefoot. Not Mm -hmm. all the time, but just sometime every day. Yeah. So I kind of got off from, you know, the history of shoes to, you know, to uh, wearing bare feet. Yeah. And how did your own journey start or develop? Yeah, it developed. It really developed because in 2001, I walked the uh, pilgrimage route in Spain, the El Camino de Santiago de Compostela. And I walked it because I was downsized from my corporate telecom position. And um, I was literally walked out one Monday morning and I didn't know what to do. So I thought I needed to do something drastic. I needed to spend time alone. And I I decided to walk 800 kilometers in 29 days and in the winter. And I went alone and it changed my life. When I came home from that journey, I realized that I'd become a walker, that I loved walking now. Mm -hmm. Um, So every day I would go for a walk, even if it was a short walk. And then eventually I moved up north to my cottage, which is where I am now. So I live on a lake. I'm near a forest. Even when I walk on my street, you know, it's very natural, lots of trees. And so I started spending time in the forest. And then over time, uh, when you spend a lot of time in nature, uh, Mother Nature uh, begins to teach us. She offers us wisdom. Uh, She helps us to engage and become a part of the cadence of the universe. And then you start to um, really uh, be introduced to a wisdom that is only learned when you are accessing nature. Uh, and, uh, and you have to do it you know, consistently. It can't be just like once you go for a walk in the forest. Or, you know, it's, it's something, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. So, uh, so one day I went, I went for a walk in the forest and I was wearing my hiking boots and socks and I came home. I went down to the water and I, I, um, the, at the edge of the shore, there's this beautiful granite rock that is the beginning of the Precambrian. Well, it is a Precambrian shield, but it goes all the way out to the Rockies. So it's this beautiful piece of 
of rock that I'm connected to. Mm -hmm. And so I was sitting there and I just got this message to take my shoes and socks off. And so I took them off and I put my feet on the rock. And all of a sudden, there was like this burst of energy that went through my whole body, uh, like a kundalini energy, right? Yeah. And right away, I knew, oh, I'm supposed to be barefoot. That was the message that I got as clear as day. And that was eight years ago. And I've been, I, I wasn't barefoot all the time at the beginning. But now, most of the time, you'll find me barefoot because I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, I know, because I... I really promote the connection with with mother earth um i tell people to spend as much time in nature yeah. as possible because the earth's magnetic um energy is actually quite healing the most healing energy that we can find um so to walk barefoot outdoors is amazing but what about people like me that live in an apartment or, or somebody who lives in a condo how can they get in touch with nature without necessarily being in nature Well, I mean, first of all, just being barefoot gives you, it connects you with your environment. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not nature directly. Even if you're barefoot in your apartment, your apartment, mm -hmm. the walls of your apartment go down into the foundation. The foundation is, is in the earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's connected. Maybe not necessarily the electrical charge doesn't go, but, but it is connected. Um, so just start by walking barefoot in your home and understanding that sensation and the freedom. And, and then once you start to experience that, there's almost a desire or craving to take it further. It's, mm -hmm. it's a natural thing that happens um, because it is natural for us to be barefoot. So we want to do it. So then you can just go outside and there must be a patch of grass somewhere outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So go and find the patch of grass and you know, put your feet on it and, there's a wonderful uh, thing that's been around for a long time. It's called dew walking. And it's not new. It's like, it's old. It's ancient almost. And you go out in your bare feet and you walk in the wet grass. Yeah. Because water conducts electricity. Our bodies are bioelectrical. And there's an energetic charge in the earth, as you said, a magnetic field, but also negatively charged electrons. And so we get all that. And it feels fantastic. Yeah, it so does. it's you can do baby step. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are Just some find of, find a park? Yeah. Okay. And what I do is like I actually have Himalayan salts in my. I have a flat basket, and I put Himalayan salts there. So I, I yeah. use that in the winter to to ground myself. Um, but there, I know that there's people that yeah. have patches of grass in their on their balcony, and, and they use that as well. Um, it, it's not just for the dog to Perfect. poop on. <laughs> and um, <laughs> the, the other thing I wanted to ask you, what health benefits did you notice the moment that you started barefoot walking? Well, that's a really interesting question because um, I found many things shifted. So first of all, um, uh, I don't know if this is a health benefit, but it is kind of because it's about fear. And so I realized that when I went outside of my bare feet, I was immediately afraid. Um, and that shoes gave me a false sense of security. And, and, and it's false because, you know, you can still hurt yourself with, with shoes on. But anyway, it's this idea of getting over fear. So not living with a tiny, little wee bit of anxiety all the time, you know, when I was barefooting. And so by just overcoming a little bit of fear, then I started to apply that into my life. So there was a real sort of, you know, mental um, benefit to barefooting. But the other thing that happened is I had a patch of eczema on the back of my leg down by my ankle. And that patch was there for, I would say, I don't know, 10 or 12 years, like a long, long time. Yeah. I tried everything everything possible to get rid of it, uh, including changing my diet and everything. It would not go away. And what happened was when I started barefooting, it started, I noticed it was getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and it eventually just disappeared. Mm -hmm. So um, the inflammation in my body also went down. Mm -hmm. So, in, you know, sometimes on your wrist, if you look at your wrist and it's a little bit puffy, um, so I, you know, I saw that, 
But now, like my wrists are just like skin. There's no, there's no puffiness there at all. There's no puffiness in my hands or, you know, in my body. All the inflammation started to go down. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, um, what was the other thing? Oh, just oh, my um, alignment. So my posture completely changed. Mm-hmm. When you wear shoes, your heels lift up, lift you forward. Yeah. So as soon, as soon as you're in shoes, even if it says there's no sole, no heel, there's a little wee heel. So you lift and you dip forward just ever so slightly. So once you dip forward, your entire body is out of alignment. Maybe it's only like, you know, a millimeter or whatever, but it's all out of alignment. So that means your body is in a stressful state all the time. It's trying to straighten out. As soon as you go barefoot, immediately you straighten out and you drop back the core body, the core muscles engage. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to do another sit up in your life. You just have to be barefoot and you'll engage your core. And the other thing that I noticed was my chin. So I had developed, you know, a little bit of a, you know, extra chin there <laughs> um, over time. And every time I smiled, <laughs> like I'd see in pictures, you know, like when you smile and you have that thing there. Yeah. I, I thought, oh, I wish I could get rid of that. But I didn't know how to get rid of it. Yeah. I tried everything. You know, my mom used to get us to walk with books on our heads so that our, <laughs> we'd be, you know, our posture would be good. But, and it really, she did. And so what I found was that because my shoulders dropped down, my back straightened out, now I'm stacked. Okay, so my shoulders are stacked on my hips. My hips are stacked on my knees. My knees are stacked on my ankles. And now I'm perfectly straight. What happens is the chin drops back into the place it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And the double chin disappears. Mm-hmm. So if you want to look younger, go barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. you do look fantastic. <laughs> so you're definitely a oh, good you. for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just amazed. Well, um, believe me, I had a double chin before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah um, yeah. And, and, and just reading, I haven't gotten through the entire book yet, but um, reading how to wear bare feet. Um, you talked about a story where you were jogging in the forest and you came across a bear and, and <laughs> how, how incredible, yeah. I mean, scary as can be, but how incredible that, um, you, you, you were able to connect that way with, with a really dangerous animal. If, if you're not careful, um, how was that for you? Yeah. <laughs> well, Again, if I go back to the conversation about fear, about facing fear, mm-hmm. um, what I found was when I, when I was looking eye to eye at this bear who was huffing at me and pounding his paw on the ground to let me know, you know, he was angry, he wanted me to go, and I'm saying he, it might have been a, a girl, I don't know, mm-hmm. um, or a female. But I, um, it was like looking at this bear eye to eye and standing grounded with my feet touching the earth. It gave me not so much a sense of power, but um, more like just a feeling like I was a part of this conversation. You know, I was a part of the earth. I was a part of the forest. And I was a part of what the bear, you know, where the bear lived. I, I was now a part of, of that environment. And that gave me a real appreciation for the natural world, which we are a part of. Um, yeah. And it's a part of my life that I had completely ignored. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't confront animals in the fight. I never wanted to see animals. I was afraid of them. Uh-huh. Um, but. I had actually been asking to see a bear because I wanted to. I really wanted to see one. Mm -hmm. I I saw a moose one day in the forest too, and that's a scary encounter because they are big. Very territorial as (laughs) well, especially during May. (laughs) They are. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Now, um, I know that the the barefoot movement has, has grown beyond your wildest dreams. I mean, you left the corporate world and then began yeah. this movement, and now you actually produce barefoot wear 
um, how or how how do you call them? Barefoot shoes. They're they're so barefoot. Bare bottom shoes. Yeah, bare because bottom they don't shoes. have a sole. <laughs> no, they yeah. don't. Barefoot shoes. Yeah. Okay, and and they're awesome. I I went onto your yeah. website and I checked them out. They look fantastic. Now, where um, yeah. aside from the oh, website. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you sell these? Um, do you attend trade shows or, or? And so when I first designed the shoes, I designed them because I would go, as I said, into stores and restaurants and be asked to leave. Mm -hmm. And I'm not the kind of person that's, that likes to be confrontational. I'm not going to stand there. I'm not going to carry a placard around. I'm just not that way. I'd rather get my message across another way. And so Rather than standing there and arguing with them, you know, I would just leave. And but I was embarrassed. I was actually embarrassed to be walked out of a, a store. And so I thought, well, you know, what if I what if I designed a shoe that didn't have a sole? Then everybody would be happy. They would all think I'm wearing a shoe. But in fact, I would get my way. You know, I'd be able to go barefoot. Mm -hmm. So I designed the shoes and I started off doing trade shows and going, having the shoes sold in different stores. And, but the thing is, um, Gabby, if you're, if you're going to sell a lot of shoes, um, you know, probably everybody said, go to, you know, go to China, have them made in China. They're really, they'd be made really cheap and then you can make. And I was like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to make shoes in China. I want to keep them here in Canada. And I want to offer them to people um, as a you know, locally made product. And so uh, as a result, I had to pull them out of stores. And I, I still do some trade shows, but I've stopped a lot of them because the cost of doing it is, you know, it's quite, um, you know, it's quite expensive. Yeah. So I just sell them online. And awesome. people, it's all through word of mouth. And believe it or not, most of my sales come from Europe. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm not even there, you know, like people, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They just hear about it and one person tells another person and mm -hmm. in Europe, they have a really different understanding of the value of land and of being connected to the land yeah. because there are more people that have to share the land. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, they seem to just like pick up on it. Whereas you know, sometimes here it's a little bit more of a of an education. Okay. Now I'm just picturing myself, uh, and I, I this came into my mind, and, and I actually was reading it in the book as well. What if I walked into a fancy restaurant and, and I'm wearing you know barefoot shoes? I, I think I'd probably wear something long enough that they wouldn't be able to tell that I wasn't wearing high heels. But um, you mentioned in the book that Julia Roberts actually um, rebelled against the Oscars one year by going barefoot because the dress code at the Oscars is to wear, for women to wear kind of heels. So she rebelled by going barefoot. So she rebelled by going barefoot. Yeah. And because, because she's Julia Roberts, um, you know, she was able to do it, which is really, really great because she made a point and people heard. And, um, you know, I think, I, I don't know what happened. I never did read about the outcome, but I'm sure uh, you know, they've, but they've rewritten the rules. So, I mean, I hope they have, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like why apparently women had to wear a certain height of heel, like on the red carpet. Wow. Like that's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> that no, is. No, no. Yeah. And so she made a point and yeah. And it's, we need people like Julia Roberts to go out there barefoot yeah. <laughs> you know, to make that point. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us, Sue. Um, if people want to contact you, what is your Facebook handle and the website address yeah. and any other contact information you want to share with us? Sure. My um, website is suekenny.ca or .com. Actually, we'll get you there as well. And um, on Instagram, I'm Camino Sue because I do, I, I love the Camino and I take groups on the Camino. I also walk barefoot on the Camino, uh, which is probably how the pilgrims like a thousand years ago walked the Camino. Yeah. Um, and what I find is when I'm walking the Camino barefoot, it's like an energetic portal, you know, a place where thousands of people have walked with the intention of 
you know, whatever their own personal intentions are. But a lot of them, if they were Roman Catholic, had the intention of being closer to God. And so when you step into that energy, it's really powerful. And, you know, I'll just say something else, you know, before we close off. And that is that um, it was not that long ago. Uh, I was in, um, I was actually in Hollywood, okay, in, in Beverly Hills, part of me, California. And I was doing my training for the Wim Hof course. And we ran up this, um, there's a kind of a, a mountain in the middle of the city mm-hmm. um, and in the middle of Beverly Hills. And it's this beautiful mountain. I'm trying to think of the name of it and I can't think of it right now. It's not super high, but it's high enough. And that's where we had our course was up the mountain. So I um, got a ride up the mountain. We parked the car and I got out of the car and I stepped on the ground in this forest uh, before we got up to the cabin where we were doing our class and I just stopped and I was with a few people and they said, uh, are you okay? And I said, yeah. I said, I'm just getting this feeling that I'm connecting with all the people in the world who are barefoot right now. And so that gives me the, um, the beautiful opportunity of connecting with people who may be I would never meet in my life. Uh, maybe they live in uh, like in little villages, you know, in India or Africa or, you know, China or wh- whatever. Yeah. But these are people who are working the land. Who are on, and they could be children, they could be elderly people. Mm-hmm. And I had this moment where I felt like we were all one. Nice. And there was a beautiful sense of love and peace. And wouldn't it be beautiful if we could all come together in our bare feet and connect through the earth all around the world? So maybe, maybe one day we'll see that. Hopefully. <laughs> so, and there is a, a, yeah, there, there is a Facebook page too called the, uh, bare, the Barefoot Movement. So people can, you know, check for um, updates and, and research and, and different things and also comment and share share their photos so that others can be inspired by, you know, by their photos. Awesome. Now, um, you mentioned the Wim Hof method. You also do workshops. I know that this past weekend I couldn't attend it, but you also do workshops on the Wim Hof method, which is, um, I'll let you explain it, but it's, it's a breathing exercise uh, or technique. It's a breathing exercise or technique. Yeah, it's, it's actually, the, they call it three pillars. So there's the breathing, There's, um, it's called willpower, um, which is extremely powerful. And then um, gradual cold immersion or, uh, you know, just blunt cold immersion, like just, you know, getting into an ice bath. And the thing is that um, Wim uh, holds 26 world records um, all around being in freezing cold water or ice water. Uh, And if, you know, for most of his life, he's been doing that. Mm-hmm. and breaking all these records and then he he kind of got tired of people sort of making him a bit of a bit of a joke like what are you going to do now Wim you know why don't you do this or why don't you do that and so he said no he said he called in the scientists and he said come and you know test me see mm-hmm. what happens when you you know when you test me and they found out that in fact through several research projects they've now determined that through this method, we can access our autonomic nervous system. We can begin to heal ourselves. And we also um, have the ability to, uh, to control that or command. If we command our breath, we command our mind. If we command our mind, we command our body. Mm-hmm. And so through that, he teaches that the cold is, he says, the cold is his warm friend. And, uh, and I say that the cold shows us aspects of ourselves that we never thought were possible to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, will, you will see your authentic self in the cold um, and using the breath work. So I've, um, I've totally embraced it and become a certified instructor. And I've awesome. been doing courses since the end of December. And uh, people are, it's changing lives. I'm, I'm watching it happen right in front of me. So um, yeah, so if anybody wants to know anything at all about that, they can reach out to me, um, you know, and ask any questions at all, or I can send them, send them the link to the workshops. Um, but yeah, it's pretty powerful. Thank you so much for that. 
Well, I would love to spend a lot more time with you, Sue, but I'll let people contact you directly for more information. And thank you again for sharing this. It was, uh, it's been really enlightening just to read the few pages that I have been reading of your book. And I look forward to hopefully in the very near future, take a, a, a Wim Hof method training with you. Oh, I would love that. I would absolutely love that. And thank you so much. And thank you for everything that you're doing in the world and, thank you know, sharing stories and, and contributing so much. That's really important as well. Happy thank barefooting. You. Thank you. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay.